Jennifer from Fiberflux. In this video, I'm going to show you how to crochet this beautiful watercress lace neck wrap. This is a lovely pattern that is made with your favorite sock yarn, and it's worked up in a super easy lace stitch. And even though it's really basic stitches, it makes a really beautiful lacy fabric. And then I've attached a fabulous coconut wood button to one of the corners. It's simply a rectangle. And that way you can wear it however you like. You can wear it kind of asymmetrically like this. You can wear it with the button forward to make like a little capelet. Or you can spin the button around to the back and wear it as more of a traditional cowl. And I really love this as we're approaching spring because it's nice and lightweight when there's still a little bit of a springy chill in the air but um, you know you might need a little something still and sock yarn comes in such beautiful colors you can really um, get pretty fancy with this if you like so like I mentioned before this is a uh, simple rectangle that we've made in lace and the finished measurements of this are about 23 inches long and then about eight inches wide. So you can really customize it, though. You can make it much longer if you want to make a long infinity scarf or something like that. For this project, you'll need a pair of scissors, a tapestry needle, a ruler or tape measure is super helpful to kind of measure as you go along. You'll need one button. Now, I used a button that's about an inch wide, and that was really helpful when you um, pass it through these lacy holes that will double up as our buttonholes as well. We're also going to be using a four millimeter G crochet hook. This is my Furls Odyssey hook. I'll put the link down below for that because I always get a lot of questions about my hook. So for the yarn, you can really use any sock weight yarn that you like. I used for this finished one over here, this yarn is called Smushy by Dream in Color. And the colorway is called Spring Tickle. So it's kind of like this spring green sort of, uh, there's a little bit of Flex of color variation. It's a really beautiful yarn. And I have this other sock yarn that's variegated because as many of you know, I love to see a pattern worked in different colors. And that's why I like to see all of your projects too. So keep sharing those projects. And I use about half the skein of the smushy for this. So each skein of that is 450 yards and I used half of the skein. So about 225 yards uh, for this project. Now if you choose to go longer, obviously you'll use more yarn than that. Okay, so to begin, we're just going to grab a little bit of yarn. And I didn't mention this before, but this yarn um, is called Sensations Truly. Um, I believe it's discontinued. It's I was from Joanne Fabrics like many, many, many years ago. So just as a side note, but there are so much sock yarns out there that are so gorgeous to pick from. Um, and a lot of them are variegated like this one. So, so to begin, we're going to put a slip knot on our hook, wrap the yarn around your fingers to make a loop, bring the yarn behind the loop, reach in with your hook, bring up the loop and tighten. Okay, next we're gonna do a starting chain of 33. Okay, so to make a chain, wrap yarn around hook and bring it through the loop. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, and 33. So here is our starting chain. Now, sometimes people ask me um, why their chain is so tight. If you're having trouble with tightness, it is probably your tension. But what you can do is go up a hook size. So we're using the G hook. You could go up to an H hook for the starting chain only, and then go back down to the G hook for the remainder of the project. So that'll kind of loosen up your chain a little bit. So let's begin row one. This is a two row repeat, so it's super easy. So for row one, we're going to work our first uh, little, we, we have a series of fans here. Now let me just show you on this one. They're kind of like a double V stitch and they make these really pretty little fans. So what we're gonna do is go in the sixth chain from the hook. So this loop here does not count. So go one, two, three, four, five, and six. So this little chain here, 
we're going to work a double crochet, chain one, three times, okay? So, you know what? Let me just zoom in a little tiny bit so you can see what I'm doing here. So to make a double crochet, wrap yarn around hook, insert it into that chain that we counted, wrap yarn around hook, bring up a loop, you'll have three loops on your hook, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the last two loops. And then we're gonna chain one, and then remember we're, we're doing a double crochet, chain one three times. So that's one, and then this is two, remember double crochet, chain one, and then work the third one, double crochet, chain one, okay? And then work one more double crochet all in that same chain. So this whole thing was all in that same chain, just like that, okay? And you have your first little fan. The fans will be stacking on themselves, okay? Now we're going to skip three chains. One, two, three, and in the chain after that, we're going to work the same sequence. So double crochet chain one three times and then one more double crochet on that same chain. So let's go double crochet, chain one, that's one, double crochet, chain one, that's two, double crochet, chain one, that's three, and then a double crochet, all in that same chain, okay? So now we have two little fans here. Next, we're going to do this all the way across our row, okay? So let's continue across the row. Remember, skip three chains. One, two, three, and in the next chain, we're gonna do the same thing. Double crochet, chain one, that's one. Double crochet, chain one, that's two. Double crochet, chain one, that's three. Let me get a little bit more yarn. Double crochet, all in that same chain. We're just creating this, kind of like this foundation row of chains that will, or fans we'll be building them all up onto. Okay, once again, skip three chains. One, two, three, and in that chain after that, we're gonna do the same thing. Go double crochet. Chain one, that's one. Double crochet, chain one, that's two. Double crochet, chain one, that's three. And then a double crochet, all in that same chain. Okay? Moving right along, skip three chains. One, two, three, and in the chain after that, do the same thing. Double crochet, chain one, that's one. Double crochet, chain one, that's two. Double crochet, chain one, that's three, and then a double crochet. And as a side note, we've changed colors a little bit with our variegated yarn. Variegated yarn is so fun to work with. The colors just reveal everything for you and present themselves. Okay, we're gonna continue the same sequence by skipping three chains. One, two, three, and in the chain after that, work your next fan. So, double crochet, chain one, that's one. Double crochet, whoops, double crochet, chain one, that's two. Double crochet, chain one, that's three. And then work that one last double crochet, okay? Then we're gonna skip three chains once again. One, two, three, and in that chain after that, work your next fan. This is the last fan of the row two. So double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one, and then work a double crochet. Okay, so to finish off the row, you're going to have 
three chains left. So you're going to skip two chains and in that very last chain just work one double crochet. Moving right along to row two, we're going to chain three. One, two, three, and turn our work. So now we don't have to count chains anymore. So row two is actually easier than row one because we're just going to be working into the center of these fans. Because each fan, we had our two double crochets. Uh, we're gonna go in the center of those, okay? So very in the middle of those fans, we're going to work the same type of fan. So remember, double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one, and then that one more double crochet, okay? And as you can see, our fans are kind of stacked on top of one another, okay? Hop over to your next fan and in the center of that one, work a double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one, and a double crochet to create that fan. Hop over to your next fan and we'll do the same thing. Double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one, double crochet, Next fan, double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one, and a double crochet, all in that same fan. All right, next fan, double crochet, chain one, Double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one, and a double crochet. Whoops, next fan, same thing. Double crochet, chain one, and we're switching colors just as a side note, so exciting. Double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Okay, next fan, our last fan of the row. We're going to work a double crochet chain, chain one, double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one, and a double crochet. All right, so row two looks great. Now let's finish off the row by working a double crochet into that turning chain space. So what that means is now, whenever you have uh, fans and Vs like this, it opens them up and can lay those fans down really flat. So you might need to kind of dig around for it. It's way back here. See way back here? When you made that turning chain in the previous row, it created a little space. So just work a double crochet right into that turning chain space. Just like that, okay? So row two is complete and it looks really pretty. You know, I love this green, but I think it looks really fun in the variegated yarn as well. And the yarn is, this, this sock yarn is a little bit like squishier and this sock yarn is a little bit like uh, drapier, so it, it looks a little bit different, which is neat. I think that's really neat. Okay, so let's uh, pretend that we're finished. So to finish your uh, cowl, you're just gonna be repeating row two over and over and over and over again for as long as you like, or for 23 inches, whatever you prefer. And then when you're finished, we'll pretend like we're finished, you're just gonna cut the yarn and fasten off. So wrap the yarn around your hook, and bring the yarn through. Next, you'll want to weave your ends in. So take the tapestry needle and thread the tapestry needle. 
Now, depending on how many balls of yarn you, uh, if you use more than one, you'll have more ends or if you switched colors or something like that. But you're gonna go one direction with your tapestry needle. And if you have variegated yarn like I'm using, try to stay in the orange section if, you're, if, if your tail is orange or whatever color you're using. And then come back in the other direction. Take your scissors. Whoops. Take your, take your scissors and trim and then straighten things out a bit. And then you can repeat that for the other tail. Now I'm going to stay in this blue and white stripey section because if I try to go into the orange section right below with this, it'll really stick out and not look very nice. So I'm just weaving that in. Okay. The last thing I wanted to show you is the button. So you need a button for this. Now, if you just kept going and going and going and make a scarf, um, that's fine. Now, if you if you have a little bit of an arc like this, as you work more and more rows, it's going to straighten itself out. It's just it's just curving a little bit right now because it's short. Um, but let's look at our original piece here. So once you have a big rectangle like this one then you can sew the button. So this is the starting edge and I sewed it in the bottom left corner. So let me get that out of the way and let's grab our little sample piece. So you'll want to find a uh, needle that can easily pass through the buttonholes, okay? Just as um, a tip there or else it'll be hard, very hard to sew the button on. So all you're going to do is cut a little piece of yarn. This is probably about 12 inches long. Thread it with your tapestry needle. And then that bottom left corner, so remember our starting edge, you're just going to hold the button right on there. Come up from the back, but don't go all the way. Leave a little tail. Go back down and just do that a couple of times. Anything that you wear, you want to make sure that button is very secure so that it stays. When you button and unbutton it and wear it, it's going to get a lot of movement. So you just want to make sure everything is nice and secure. And then when you're done, flip it over and you're just going to remove your needle and just tie it really snug to the back. Do a couple of knots. I like to do a couple just to make sure that button is on there. And then you can, once again, take your tapestry needle and just thread it, okay? You could cut it flush, but those ends might start popping out and not look as nice. So thread that one in. Now this tail is very short, but I think we can get it in there. And then thread that one in as well. And then all you have to do is grab your scissors and snip the yarn. Now if you used animal fibers, for example, my finished piece over here, I used, uh, this is, uh, I believe it's merino wool. Hold on, I have, the, I have the written pattern here that you can find on the, the blog, which I'll put the link down below. Uh, yes, that was a merino, so that's wool. So if you want to block it, you can. If not, it's, it's fine too. Um, but that's it. That's how you crochet the watercress lace button cow. Thanks so much for watching and be sure and click the subscribe button to get all the latest Fiberflux video updates. Thanks again. Bye.